check out all my books on audible.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video, and put your comments below. Hi, Dr. Bob. I haven't eaten meat in 42 years. 42 years ago. I was in India, 1980, and um, I had been there for maybe a few weeks, and you really just couldn't find any good meat. I was in uh, Jammu, India, and in Amritsar. I was staying at the Guru Ram Das uh, ashram and visiting the Golden Temple. And, um, you know, I was out on the street and I got some meat and it was fresh and it was cooked right in front of me as curry. It was delicious. And that was it because everything I saw was like, you know, like chicken. You're not going to eat that, you know. All they had was, at that time, chicken and mutton, which is lamb. And it was really sketchy. So, and I kept getting sick over and over and over. And as a matter of fact, when I got up to Kashmir, uh, I ate at a restaurant, it became extremely sick. I mean, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I thought I was going to die more than once when I was in India. But that's how I became a vegetarian. And then after that, um, you know, I was in India for over six months. I just had a backpack. Um, you know, I saw the Dalai Lama. Nobody had ever heard of him before. So that was kind of cool. Um, he's in Dharamsala. I re started reading the Bhagavad Gita. That's their Bible. And I'm not any kind of Hindi or anything Hindu. But I kept going around to these holy places and talking to these people. And they just said, hey, look. You know, you want to eat meat, uh, stop eating meat because your mind will be clear. I'll, I'll make a long story short. Um, as soon as I stopped eating meat, my, you know, it was easier to go to the bathroom. I My mind did get clear. It wasn't nearly as foggy um, or, you know, if it was foggy, but it was just kind of cleared up. I could think better. I mean, it, it didn't happen like over and a while. It took months for this to happen, really kind of a year almost, you know, after even after I left India, I could, I could feel like, you know, you know, because I just you know, kind of saw this philosophy, you don't want to kill things to live, which is, you know, that's vegetarianism. Anyway, it just stuck with me. I just went, I ended up going to Italy after that, and I actually went to Greece and then Italy, and I just didn't eat meat anymore. Um, 18 years, I was a vegetarian, and then I became a vegan, so I stopped eating meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. Um, you know, I lived on like eggs when I was in India. That's where I got my protein. Yeah, I ate a lot of eggs. And that's definitely one of my, and a lot of dairy products, but giving that up, rather, the dairy in particular really kind of clears you out, you know, you get all the sinuses go away and all the congestion. So that's nice. So, um, but that was 42 years ago. So I haven't eaten meat in 42 years. I feel great. And then about, um, I don't know how many years ago, 25 years or so, I, found, I discovered first spirulina. Um, a cyanobacteria and then chlorella so I started using and I looked and they're 60 percent protein I said well this is what you want to use for your protein right Duh. so I started importing like I got 10 kilos now I import you know <laughs> tons and tons of spirulina and chlorella every single year so um, I'm one of the biggest well probably the biggest importer in the US of, of chlorella um, and one of the biggest importers of spirulina so um, this is where you want to get your your um, your protein from you know, there's some in nuts, there's some in rice, you know. I took a class on uh, vegetarian cooking, so we learned how to make a, a meatloaf out of lentils, and I call lentil loaf, all this kind of stuff. But um, then I became a raw foodist, and that's true health. So, you know, becoming a vegetarian is a step toward health, but becoming a raw foodist is like 10 giant leaps. So, um, you know, this is uh, this is what I did, and it's been 42 years, and uh, I don't have any cravings for meat. I never have. Uh, want people go, wow, that's impressive, or they just can't believe it. I mean, they're just shocked that anybody would ever do anything like that. Uh, I've talked to Buddhists who are vegetarians, and I tell them that you know I haven't eaten meat in you know 35 years, 40 years, whatever, and they just are like, wow, <laughs> that's <laughs> they can't believe it. But um, you're just eating the middleman, as, as uh, I say all the time. Animal protein, uh, meat, fish, eggs, or dairy, which we always cook, okay? And that's the main health problem with them. They're just the middleman. You're just eating the food. Everything we eat tends to be vegetarians. So, like, uh, you know, chickens and cows and, you know, all these different you know, fish. They're all vegetarians. And they're eating foods and, and accumulating them. And then we eat their flesh. And you get some fats out of the fish and everything. But they're just, you know, animals and mammals can't make fat. Okay, we can accumulate fat, but only the plant world can create fat. So you just need to eat from the plant world. That's what people can't get over. But as far as all the animal rights stuff and all that kind of thing, 
Um, I have feelings on that I will not disclose because what's the difference? If physiologically meat is a vastly inferior food, so that's why you want to get up, give up meat. To be honest with you, I can always tell the face of a meat eater and somebody who eats a lot of meat. And when you go to the expos, like I go to, these health expos, Natural Products Expo is a good example. You'll see the people that are in the meat booth and they've got the organic meat and all natural meat and beef and all this kind of stuff. That's, I can see their face. They're meat eaters. There's no doubt about it. And if somebody's been a vegetarian for a really long time, I can tell that too. You know, I can kind of see, especially when they get into me my age, like I'm 65. So, you know, you can really tell the face of a meat eater. It's a totally different looking face. I can tell a lot about your health by just looking at your face and uh, whether or not you drink enough water, you eat enough raw fruits and vegetables, whether you eat meat, uh, whether you're on a junk food diet. I can look and see if somebody's on a fast food diet, I mean, you know, or, or junk food diet of some sort. I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but it reflects in their eyes and their face. You get all glaucoma, you know. I mean, I've, all my friends at my age, they've had surgery for glaucoma, they can't see anymore. That happens when you live on this kind of a diet. You want to stay away from fried foods. But anyway, 42 years, no meat, and when you got spirulina and chlorella, the ultimate healthy foods, you're never going to have to worry about, why well, you're going to get sick or, you know, you need this kind of thing. So people are just obsessed with meat and they're obsessed with, um, you know, the protein aspect of it when it's really not that much protein in meat, only around 15%. The quality of it, that's another issue altogether. Um, the quality was much higher back when I became a vegetarian 40 years ago, 42 years ago. This is why I do it. So it's nothing to do with I'm better than you or I'm healthier than you. I'm uh, more moral than you. No, I'm healthier than you. Um, I don't go out and, you know, have to kill animals and have them killed. No, I'm just healthier than you. So if you want to eat meat, you should eat meat. But just be know, know that you're just doing it for the taste and, and no other reason at all. And that's what it's the number one reason people cannot get over. And uh, they just don't want to go any, anywhere near what I do. It's, the, it's not only the meat, fish, eggs, and dairy, it's the meat. Dr. Bob, see you next time. Hey, you can get four of my books now on audible.com. You can get them on Amazon if you want to read them, but four of them on audible.com, read by the author, myself. Um, the Cure in the Mirror, Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer. Uh, that's my really my best book that I've written. It took me three years to write that, and uh, it's really good. Uh, here's the silver, the miracle mineral the end of infectious disease. We've been worried about that so much for the last couple of years, right? So that tells you exactly how to do it naturally, how to cure yourself of any infectious disease. People just don't listen to me. If they did, they'd be healthy. The Miraculous Properties of Ionized Water, The Definitive Guide to the World's Healthiest Substance. This is my best-selling book. I have sold thousands and thousands of these. Um, you know, I don't have a marketing company or a publisher. I self-publish. And this is on Audible. And uh, then my latest book, the temple he was referring to was his body, which is about, uh, you know, honoring your temple through natural health. This is your temple. Your body's your temple. Um, just... Uh, Put the right things into it and you will not get disease. They're all available on Amazon.com and now Audible, audible.com. And you can listen to all these books. Dr. Bob, see you next time.